Having placed a raster image in your Revit architecture project, you can in effect place survey points to define the boundary of the site or to really kind of trace over the outline of the contours themselves by picking specific points for a known elevation. This would be uh, another technique for creating the model using points on the boundary or points following the contour lines. With the image file inserted and scaled so that's life size and I want to create the topo surface. So under massing in sight if I go to topo surface um, I'm going to choose the option that says place points. You know, see I'm in editing mode so that I'm going to place points and when I'm finished I'll click on the checkbox to finish creating the terrain. Place point, rolling forward to zoom in on this information a bit. I'm going to focus just on the top left corner initially and then I'll, I'll stop recording and then re-record when I'm closer to a finished model. So you can see if I set the elevation in here as 45 feet, then what I can do is I can start to place boundary points of my site. I'm just going to place the boundary points first. 45 feet and then it changes to 40 feet. And it, it, it isn't evident that uh, there's much in the project because these these spot heights are all aligned. Once I start to move away from the top line here, you'll see that it's actually creating a terrain model for me from the the points that I'm specifying. So if I move to uh, 35 and 35, when I put this point in, you're going to see that it's actually triangulating and creating a terrain model around the points that I give it. So I'm going to change this now to 30. And the, the lines that you're seeing are actually there are the actual contours, one foot contours. So if I say that's 30 and that's 30 over here, I'm going to continue to put some of these in. So let me just do a little bit more like of that. So um, next, so 25. Okay, so what I would typically do is go around and place all of the the, the, the points where the contours are crossing the boundary. <coughs> then at some point what I want to do is actually trace over really the, the contours themselves. So if I change this to 45, I'm going to come down, I'm going to zoom in on the, the uh, contour itself and I'm placing points to represent where the contour is. So the adjustment that you see is the uh, terrain model itself adjusting to the new data that's being added to. So when I, I go around the corner I go around fairly tight and then when I come to a straight segment I can be a bit more sparing with the number of points that I need to put in there. I'll go down to uh, 45, sorry to 40. start to put in some points on this. Okay, so let me stop there. You, you, you would continue to do this on the other, other contours. I've got the majority of the points placed that represented the contours, but I can see that I've got some like flat surfaces, I've got some edges to the model, I've got missing data where it doesn't quite know what to do, I've got contours that don't really look too much like, uh, like contours. Uh, at least not, not smooth. So I just want to show that sometimes what you want to do is you might uh, 
you might do things like uh, extend the points beyond the site so that you or, or put some uh, extra points in there so that you're going to uh, really extend the contour lines themselves or you might want to come in and put in some additional points so under the under here where I'm saying place a point I know this is at 45 foot elevation but I know that it goes a bit higher than that so ridge lines and trough lines are things that uh, the rep the representative topography doesn't doesn't uh, display very well so I might want to put in some extra points so what I'm going to say is let's go to uh, maybe like something like 47 and I'm going to put something that looks a bit more like a ridge I'm sorry place point oops I don't think I saved it 47 and now uh, put some points to maybe represent a ridge line on the model here. And I could do the same thing with, with troughs or, or uh, low points in the in a valley. So uh, I'm gonna stop it there and um, I'll finish the model off just by doing some of the extra editing and then we'll proceed with sun shadows. Just place a few points down here to make sure I'm covering the whole site. Uh, by, the, by the way, in case I didn't mention it, the option I'm using is looking at this as wireframe because if I look at it like that I can't see through to my model my image underneath, so a wireframe was how I was seeing the, the site. I'm going to ch put the last couple of points in here at say uh, 20 feet uh, 6 inches. I'm just going to put some over here, kind of like I, I did, you saw in the the previous exercise where we used a, con a file that already had contours uh, but now I'm simulating something beyond the edge of my site so I can trim this and get back to something that's a bit more realistic and uh, now I've got my I've got my terrain model here with all of the points I can either say cancel out or finish if I say finish you'll see the terrain it becomes a bit more obvious if I switch back on the hidden lines I'm saving my project and uh, th there's my terrain model. If I look at it in 3D, I'll actually see that it's got uh, material on it. The material comes from uh, manage and object styles. So for topography, by default, it has this site earth material. And um, I'm now ready to trim the edges and uh, start with my studies. <coughs> 